Welcome to the Time to Level Up podcast. I'm your host, Andrea Libros. Each week, I focus on the systems, strategy, and big thinking you need to CEO your business and life to the next level. Are you ready? Let's go. Hello, my listeners, and welcome back to the podcast. So today, we're going to continue with our business audit to create business awesome series. And we're at the point where we are going to talk all about numbers and money and the importance of understanding your numbers and your money input and output. And if you do have that understanding of numbers and money, how empowering it can be. And to help us understand more about that, I have invited an expert on today, Melissa Houston, and she is going to help understand her five steps to creating profit. She means profit is her business and she's just released a book as well. So this is one where you might want to take some notes. So make sure you grab a notepad. And this is also one where you might want to share it with a friend. If you've been discussing how to create more revenue and generate more profit in your business and what it means to actually have an understanding of that. And who are the three people that you need in your business to make sure that you get a grip on those numbers? So without much much further ado, sit back, buckle up, and listen in to my conversation with Melissa. Hey, listeners, welcome back to the Time to Level Up podcast. And today, as part of our business audit to create Business Awesome, I have invited Melissa Houston on to help us understand why those numbers are so, so, so important. And I think you all know that, but I'm going to just go out on a limb and say that some of you don't want to know that, (laughs) or it's a scary topic, (laughs) and it's one that you kind of avoid until sometimes it's too late. And I just have found in my own business, and you guys have heard me talk about this before, that once I started to understand what cash flow was specifically, my revenue went up, my profit went up, and my anxiety went down by leaps and bounds. So Melissa, welcome to the podcast. Hi, Andrea. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm so thrilled you're here. Also, right on the, uh, I'm not sure when this episode is airing, I need to look that up, but you've been busy, haven't you? Tell us all about who you are, what you do. Tell us about that book. Yeah. yeah. So, so um, I am actually a CPA and I have been a CPA for over two decades, a lot of work experience. And I started, she means profit as the, the main reason was because as I was working as a CPA and working with small business owners, I saw the disconnect between small business owners really understanding their numbers and what their accountants tell them, right? So knowing that this value was missing, this piece of the puzzle was missing for entrepreneurs and business owners, I really wanted to get out there and help business owners, educate them, help them understand their numbers, help them understand uh, what their accountants, the feedback the accountants are giving them so that they can increase the profit in their business this is such valuable information and I want to help business owners get that information in their hands so they can create financially successful, thriving businesses. Love it. So I grew up in a household with a CPA. My dad is a CPA. Oh, is that right? Okay. That's yeah. great. And he is uh, turning 85 this year. He is still at it. Well, on our day of recording here, it is April 11th. So he is busy, busy, busy. It is tax season. I don't think he's ever listened to one podcast of mine. So that is a good thing because I'm going to tell you (laughs) (laughs) that there's such a seat, like there's such a mumbo jumbo CPA talk that, I mean, I can't sometimes tell if it's because I'm his daughter and he still thinks I'm five or what, but that wasn't, even though I had a good, like I was on top of my finances from that perspective, like I'm paying my taxes and I'm doing my stuff it still wasn't helpful for me to create traction or grow my business. So I love how you're kind of uh, meshing the two or or forming a bridge, I guess, right? 
Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because your numbers are really telling you a story on how your business is doing. And, you know, you were mentioning earlier that business owners don't want to look at their numbers. And what I found personally with my clients is that it's a lot of it is about fear, anxiety, Mm -hmm. shame. Money is very emotional for people. And when you don't combine the fact that money is 80% behavior and 20% skill set, then you've got a huge disconnect. And this is why I created the Cash Confident Framework. And it's a five-step system. And the first step is money mindset. It's so important for business owners to have a positive relationship with money so that they can then tackle the 20%, which is the financial skill set. Yeah. Oh, I love that. It's 80% behavior and 20% yeah. skill set. And I think Absolutely. a lot of people think it's the opposite, right? Or yeah, or exactly. They think, well, I, I need to know everything so I can do everything. But really what happens is people are letting their fear take over. So business owners 100%. are not looking at their numbers because they're afraid that if they look at their numbers and they didn't perform as well as they had planned, then that is going to impact their self-worth. And it becomes very yep. emotional process or they're ashamed or they're fearful. They don't know how to interpret their numbers and they feel embarrassed because they went into business without knowing this. But my attitude is, How would you have known about it? Nobody's talking about it. Where would you have learned it? You wouldn't learn it in school. You wouldn't learn it. You went into business to do what you love to do, which likely is not the accounting, looking at your numbers, looking at the financial reports, that kind of stuff, right? So I don't teach people how to be accountants or bookkeepers, but I help them understand the high level financial stuff so that they can be better business owners and increase the profit in their business. I love it. And it's interesting. So the title of your book, She Means Profit. So little Actually, I'm going to correct of- you there. Sorry. Oh. Because the title of the book is Cash Confident, okay. An Entrepreneur's okay. Guide to Creating a Profitable Business. My brand okay. is She Means Profit. Okay. Fabulous. Your brand is She Means Profits. Because it's interesting. The title of my book that's coming out is She Thinks Big, right? So <laughs> you've got to think big. You've got to think big. If you want that profit, right? Yeah. And I love that that title of your book because women should think big. Why are we not thinking big? Fear, right? Like that's a a fear. And I I, I like how you brought up the embarrassed piece of it. Like you should be know, you should know this already, but why should you know it already? Yeah. No one taught you. No one taught you. Nobody taught you. So, okay. So money mindset is the first step. Yeah. And then, so going into the, to steps two to five gets a little drier. It's skill set, but it's the exciting stuff too, right? So step number two is knowing your financial reports, being able to read them and understand the feedback that you're getting on your business performance. Step three is creating a business financial plan. Where do you want your business to go? You've conquered your money mindset. You've created your financial goals. Now let's get a plan to get you there. Step number four is monitoring after you've done the plan. There's no point in having a plan if you're not monitoring your progress against the plan. Right. Right. And then step number five is managing your cash flow. Okay. Okay. So where do you think, what's the hardest step? Is it number one? Is it that? I would say absolutely without a doubt. Number one is always the hardest step because that's where you have to realize that you're worth creating a viable business that's going to be successful and make you a lot of money. Because so often when I talk to women, business owners, when I ask them, well, how much money do you want to make? The response I get is, well, I only need to make as much as I need to live. Do you find that too? Yes. Or yes. They, yes. I was like, I don't know. Do you listeners can't see my face, but when you see my, when <laughs> Melissa said that, my face, I'm like, oh my. So I find, okay, only as much as I need to live, right? Sometimes I get, I just want to make more, like yeah. with no number attached to the more part. I also get, well, I don't really know because they, they're just sort of treading water and they're yeah. not, they, they don't have a, a fi- business financial plan. They don't have a plan. Right. Yeah. And they haven't like spent the time. So isn't that interesting? Because what else in life do we just sort of, there's not many to, there's not, many things in life where we don't have some sort of 
quick answer. Like, what kind of grade do you want to get on this test? Well, yeah. I'd like to get, right, a B plus yes. or above. Like, or, you know, how many kids do you want to have? Two or more. Like, you, you've got something. Yeah. It's like, maybe I'll have kids, maybe I won't. No, people usually have a plan. So when you ha- when you start a business and you don't know how you want that business to provide for you, essentially, it's just going to spin its wheels and do nothing for you. But the thing is, women have been taught to think small when it comes around mm-hmm. business. You know, mm-hmm. it's like you, you typically have the MLM business or the hobby business or what have you, and not a lot of attention until late has been get yourself a business, get yourself, you know, six figure, multiple six figure, seven yeah. figure, keep going up until you're comfortable kind of attitude. And we really need to change that because I'm a firm believer that we need to get more wealth in the hands of women because women do yes. good with money. They do. They do. So I I sometimes say that a lot of b- businesses start out as jobbies. So J-O-B-B-Y. So it's it's like a hobby and sort of a job and they sort yeah. of dab, we dabble in it. And then it's not until you really get serious about the money aspect of it that does it turn into a business. Yeah. Up until then, it's something that you feel either obligated to, like it's just, oh, it's something I do just to, you know, on the side, or you feel like it's still a passion project. Once you put the money factor into it, then it turns into a real business and you start acting like a real business owner capable of making decisions. Exactly. So, okay. So who do you, who does a, if we, if someone's a smart business owner, who do they need to have in their business to help them with money decisions? Like, cause that is another, I think, confusion factor. The well, accounting have- world is very right. confusing when it comes yeah. to that, right? Yeah. 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 Help us understand that. Like yeah. the CPA so this, this, versus the bookkeeper versus the. Yeah. This is where I get a lot of confusion because people think their bookkeeper should be doing what their accountant should be doing and vice versa. And it doesn't work that way. So I believe everybody needs a bookkeeper. Even if you can do your own books, you really want to yes. get a good bookkeeper to do the books for you. So it frees up your time to generate that revenue. So yeah. have that bookkeeper And that bookkeeper is responsible for entering the financial data. And this is really important. You really want to make sure that you hire somebody who knows the gap rules, which is the general accepted accounting principles. It sounds very basic and dry, but it's super important because so many times I have seen people skimp out on paying the bookkeeper rate, the going rate for a good bookkeeper, they figure it's just data entry. It's no big deal. But when you bring your books to your tax accountant at the end of the year, it is a disaster to have an accountant who's being paid like, you know, 10 times the rate of a bookkeeper go through your books and fix what the bookkeeper messed up. Right. Mm -hmm. So I always tell this story because it's way more cost-effective to hire somebody who knows what they're doing in the beginning than have somebody fix it at the end. Totally true. You've got your bookkeeper who enters the data. And then you've got your tax accountant who you usually see, you know, maybe once a year, depending on where you live and what your, your tax rules are and all sorts of things like that. But typically you see them once a year to file your, your business taxes. And they're there to only file your taxes because that's what you've engaged them to do. So there's a letter of engagement that you usually get from a CPA and it'll list out what you've signed up with them. And most business owners complain that their bookkeeper or their tax accountant is not providing them the day-to-day financial information that they need to run their business. And that is a big problem because typically that would be like a CFO type of person chief financial officer. So large corporations have chief financial officers. Small businesses don't. Now, what's become really popular, and I love this, is they have fractional CFOs for small businesses, Mm -hmm. where you Mm -hmm. can hire a fractional CFO to help guide you in the day-to-day financial management of your business. So depending on where you are in your business, you can either learn how to do it yourself or have somebody guide you through the steps. But I always encourage business owners that it's really important that they don't hand off the job to somebody else and like wipe their hands clean and have nothing to do with their financials, right? Because you need to be on Mm -hmm. top of what's going on in your business. If you don't understand how your business makes profit, 
you're not going to understand how to make profitable decisions for your business. You can't have that disconnect as a business owner to be the business owner, but not know your numbers. So, all right. So there really needs to be three people, at least. They've got to have the bookkeeper. Yeah. You've got to have your CPA. And then you have got to have someone that's going to help you understand or make sense of day-to-day numbers so that you can make profitable decisions. I like how you put that profitable decisions. Yes, exactly. Because every decision that you make in your business, whether you think that it impacts your bottom line or not, it does. Everything in business impacts your bottom line. Every decision that you make from, from somebody that you hire to somebody that you outsource to, I don't know, plant for your office that you're going to buy. Right. <laughs> you know, like right. All affects your profit line. It's true. I just bought this today just for $54.99, like an hour ago, some clean up my Mac uh, software. <laughs> there you go. And, and right? that's and tax like, deductible. <laughs> it is. It is. And I was like, okay, I think this is a smart decision because this Mac is running really slow. So I'm not sure what's going on. But even, you know, I'm thinking in my head because it says it's a subscription. Okay, I'm going to note that. It's going to auto, auto, uh, you know. Renew, yes. Renew next year. But Right, every little decision. Plants yeah. to software to uh hiring someone. They're all they're all decisions. And they're all important decisions, right? Because you don't want to yeah. spend more than what you're bringing in. 100%. And- so okay, so let's talk about that. Spending more or deciding what to spend. That brings lots of fear. So I even see sometimes when people seem to get a handle on we'll call it like number 1 bookkeeper, number 2 CPA, the day to day, they maybe even they understand that the data, but the day to day is, and they're fearful of spending money. And someone I even asked me in a coaching call the other day, how much money should I be spending? How much money should I have in in the bank? How much? And I even corrected them, like, what does in the bank mean? We went into that, but yeah, tell me what you tell me your thoughts on that. Such question. a common question, and a lot yeah. of it I find is because of that profit first book. Yeah, and. Yeah. As a CPA, a traditionally trained accountant, I'm not a big fan of that method, right? So I don't believe that there's a specific allocation of, you know, having, you know, 20% for your, for your, I don't know, whatever, like just different bank accounts. The the idea of having like these millions of bank accounts is just mind boggling to me as well. I think that you need one bank account for your operations and the other bank account for your tax, your tax money. Like yep, you definitely yep. want to put your tax money aside each and every month so that you have built the money to pay the bill. Now, what is really important is to know what your net profit margins are in your business. Yes. And what that is, is your revenue less your expenses will equal your profit. And your net profit margin is what you need to benchmark against other businesses in your industry. So your competition So if your competitors are running at about a 30% net profit margin, you want to make sure you're doing at least 30%, if not better, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's the important numbers, or those are the important numbers you want to track. You want to make sure that your revenue is higher than your, 30% higher than your expenses, if 30% is what you're aiming for, to ensure that you've got that healthy profit margin and the important thing to remember too is you have to pay yourself first before you calculate your profit. Yeah. And so many yes. business owners are failing to pay themselves. Or they they'll talk about these numbers before they paid themselves. Yes. Like I made ten thousand dollars last month. And then my question is, okay, is that did you did you pay yourself? Is that before or after you paid yourself? Yeah. Well, that's before because I can't quite figure out how much I should pay myself and Should I instead be investing in X, Y, and Z? Exactly. And this is why step number three is so important because you built that business financial plan and you understand where you want to take your business to because it's a 12-month plan and you understand at each step where you need to invest your money, right? So Mm -hmm. your revenue is not the same thing as your profit. And often business owners think, well, if I made $10,000 of revenue this month, then that's how much I made. But that's not how it goes. Because like you said, you have to subtract how much you pay yourself. You you are an employee of your business and you need to rely on your salary. Plain and simple. 100%. Yes. So pay yourself a consistent amount 
each and every month that you can rely on to cover your personal finances. And, you know, less all the business expenses that go into your business to run it because nobody can run their business for nothing. It's nearly impossible this day and age. You still have to, you know, even if you're a service-based business, you still have to pay for your subscriptions and your, yeah. your all the stuff, right? So, all the stuff. yeah. So you want to monitor your expenses to make sure that you're not spending more than what you bring in because quite often, yet again, business owners are not aware that they're spending more than what they're bringing in. They wonder why their cash is their cash balance is like nil at the end of the month. Mm-hmm. So having a handle on all that will really help you understand how much you need to how much revenue you need to bring in each and every month so that you are profitable. Mm-hmm. And that comes and through I, the financial plan. And I think what's interesting too is that sometimes I say if you've got all of this down on paper, then it can be very powerful because you can easily see if I have three more clients or if I sell X, Y, and Z, 10 more things. Exactly. It's really not that hard in a sense, right? To if mm-hmm. you wrap your mind around it, to increase your revenue to then hopefully create more profit or pay, maybe not even create more profit, or pay for additional services or people or help in your business to give you that freedom that you're looking for. Right. So mm-hmm. sometimes it's a trade-off like you could hire someone to help you, which would give you maybe more time. Yes, it's an expense, but what are you gaining from that expense? So I always say, if you have that financial picture and plan, it's pretty easy to increase revenue because it becomes really clear just what you have to do. But if you don't have a clear picture and you're just kind of throwing it all up and just what what do you what like a lot of people just look at the bank account like every yeah, day I just want to I, I want to go back to your point where you're like if you don't yeah. have a plan because all yeah. I say this all the time a goal without a plan is just a wish so if you don't yes. have that plan on paper it's never going to happen correct right I love it a goal and, without a plan and going yeah. back to your point where you're asking what do I say about people who are like looking at their bank account and thinking that maybe that's their profit mm-hmm. it's so not your profit. <laughs> you know, it is people so think they have ten thousand dollars in the bank and now they can go on vacation. And that's not how it works, right? Because you right. have to plan out the next month. Like if you're not getting another payment from a client until I don't know, three, four weeks, whatever, you have to make sure that you've got the cash in the bank to cover all the financial obligations that are coming due. So mm-hmm. having that that cash management plan is there to ensure that you don't bankrupt yourself in the process because when you run out of cash, that's essentially saying that your, your business is going to go under. I mean, for service-based businesses, it's a lot easier to kind of get by, you know, with minimal cash, but for product-based businesses, this is a huge problem. Yeah. That's because you've got a, you've got a lot of upfront expenses. Exactly. Product-based business. Exactly. Okay. So, Let's talk a teeny bit about when you're starting a business and you need capital to start it, Mm -hmm. or you think that you should just be out, that you should be making a profit and then the first month, or sometimes I feel, see, see people not wanting to kind of borrow against their personal finances to start a business. There's all these, there's a lot of fear in those beginning months and I've got all sorts of theories, but what what is your best advice when, when you're in the very beginning? If you're in the very beginning of your business and you don't want to invest any capital into it, then you need to bootstrap. You need to be very careful with your finances. You need to make sure that you're focusing on bringing in the sales so that you have the money to cover everything else that you need. It takes a while for businesses to start making a profit at the beginning. The average time is usually about a year but it all depends on the industry that you're going into, right? So as Mm -hmm. I mentioned, service-based businesses tend to have less of a financial strain than product-based, but there's still a strain there. It's it's very expensive. There's a lot of cash outlay when you start a business. You know, you want to build your website. You want to, you know, get set up with this, that, and the other, and it takes money. So the cash outlay is huge at the beginning. It is, it is. And I think a lot of times women aren't creative in coming up with that cash either. They're just, oh, well, I'll just wait till I sell more or have more clients. 
in yeah. order to invest in a bookkeeper, for example, yeah. where that should be something that should be set up on day one. Yeah. Um, and my, my opinion to that is if you're hesitating like that, then you are essentially setting up a hobby business, not a business, right? Mm-hmm. If you want to, yeah, if you want to be a serious business owner, you're going to have to invest the capital and work to get that capital back to you. Right. hundred percent. Yes. I'm like, yes, yes. You're speaking my language. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. So what do you see happens? What happens when business owners adopt these five steps and start to really put them into action? What becomes possible? It's such a good question. That is a really good question. And it's like, what's not possible, right? Mm -hmm. The financial confidence that I see women have once they go through these five steps. And at first it feels very overwhelming because it's like you get thrown a a whole bunch of stuff. But when you've got something guiding you through the steps, it just makes it more bite-sized, more achievable. And you get that transformation. You really understand your business when you know your business numbers. Like you're Mm -hmm. basically unstoppable. And then you understand how you can make more money for yourself. So getting your finances in in a place where you're operating at healthy profit margins, and it doesn't take long to do this, then it allows you to grow and you know you can grow your business profitably. Love it. Right. You're unstoppable. Unstoppable completely. completely, Yeah. Yes, it's very true. I, I see that over and over again. So this has been amazing. So much knowledge, so much like I get so excited and pumped up about this. I, I do too. I, actually, I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> I, don't, I actually told some of my clients the other day, I love paying invoices, which they all look to me like, what are you? That's like, no, if I'm paying invoices and not doing it with any drama, then it means things are happening and like exactly. I'm growing and like we're just, we're going places. Yep. When I do it with a, like a pit in my stomach, then that probably means that I'm not going places and I'm not even, I don't even have the right mindset to create, to go places, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So true. So, okay. So tell us where can listeners find more of you? How can they get more of you? So my main website is shemeansprofit.com. And that's where you can find information on my podcast, my upcoming Cash Confident book, which is dropping into bookstores May 16th and a blog. Like there's tons of information on the blog. I have downloaded a bunch of Melissa's free PDFs and they are great. So if you want some, yeah, they are really well done. If you want some very clear explanations on what this all means and how to get started doing it, There's the five step cash confident framework that you can download. There's um, path to profitability. That's a new webinar that I put out that is free for people to understand how to make their business profitable. All good. And check out that book um, that is dropping May 16th. Yes. All good. And um, Melissa, thank you so much for being here. This is such an important topic and Well, thank you for having me and thank you for doing the work that you do to help women become financially empowered too, because that's so important. We need, we need it to be part of our everyday vocabulary. It's interesting that I've, in the years I've been coaching, it's usually a topic that people bring to a first initial consult call. Like I need to make more money. I want to make more money. I need to get a handle on my numbers. When it comes down to actually doing the work as we dig in, I like to say it's, there's a messy middle to that. Like yeah. you've got to kind of slog through a little bit. But once you get on that other side, once you get down to that step five for, in your framework, at least, you it's very empowering. So very empowering. You're stuff. unstoppable. <laughs> you are. You are. All right, my friends, go check out all the great things that Melissa has. And I will have all the links in the show notes. Thank you so much. So I'm going to go back to her first rule or step. Money is 80% mindset and 20% skill set. Did you hear that? 80% mindset, 20% skill set. So that does not mean that you need to be an expert at numbers. But what it does mean is that you need to be okay 
in how you think about them and in, in managing your mind around your money. And that is why I have added a whole money component to all of my coaching programs. So if you've got some money mindset issues, they should not be holding you back from investing in yourself and moving forward. In fact, that is the whole reason you should invest in yourself and move your business forward to gain a better understanding and more confidence around money. So I have a whole section of my business that I call money confidence and cash flow. And I use some of those same principles Melissa has to help my clients understand that. And if it's not me, then it should be someone else helping you understand your money mindset and how it all works. And Melissa is a great person out there, a great resource for you to tap into. So let's chat about this. If this money mindset thing is something that you know you need work on, reach out, let's set up a call. And if it's not me, if I'm not the right person, then I'm gonna help you find your right person to help you become empowered around money. Okay, my friends, go to Andrea's with an S, links with an S.com. Check out all the links. Download your business freedom finder quiz right from there. And there's a section there on money. So you can kind of tap into that as well. But also just set up a call. We can chat. If I'm not already your friend, we should be friends. All right. Talk to you soon. See you next week. Remember, this money mindset, this understanding your numbers is definitely an important, very important factor in leveling up. Let's do it. Hey, listening to podcasts is great, but you also have to do something to kick your business up a notch. You need to take some action, right? So go to Andrea's with an S, links with an S dot com, Andrea's links dot com and take the quiz. I guarantee you'll walk away knowing exactly what your next best step is to level up.